I want you to uh, notice beside you, you either have a, a, a sermon uh, note sheet or you might also have uh, probably have one of these as well. And uh, we are going through in this series, we're really going through uh, the, the 23rd Psalm. And we're going to be using other passages and things like that. But the core verses that we'll be using the, where we're getting our theme and idea from is from Psalm 23. And uh, this is a, a psalm that many of you here, maybe even if you went to church as your child, you probably memorized it. And, uh, and you know, it could be that you memorized it in like the King James Version or something I, I did. And so sometimes I have trouble, you know, getting it, uh, getting it right in another translation but, uh, because of that. But I've decided to go ahead and do it in the ESV, which is, has a pretty strong correlation to uh, the King James in its wording. It's still modernized some from there, from the these and nows. Um, but, uh, but, it, but it has a, so if you did, you were raised and you learned it that way or whatever, however you did, this will give us a comment. I really don't care what translation you memorize it in. I'm just going to ask you to memorize. Now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, in, uh, in defiance of uh, Tyler's judgment on me about Starbucks, uh, I'm going to go ahead and tell you that if you memorize the 23rd Psalm, uh, during this um, during during this series, and you don't have to come up you don't have to come up front and say it, but we'll get a few people who don't mind doing that to come up and get it quoted up front uh, in front of everybody. Uh, then I'm going to give you a Starbucks card. But if you are a super smart person or something, and you know the truth and the truth sets you free and that kind of thing, and you'd really prefer to have a Dunkin' Donuts card, then I'll get you that too. Okay. Um, my joke. I got my joke in for the day. Uh, so, yeah, and he laughed. That's good. Boy, I'm telling you why. Would someone take a picture of him laughing at that joke? No. Um, and so if you, if you wouldn't, for your good, it's not for my good, it's for your good, uh, if, if you would memorize Psalm 23. Now, I will tell you this. Psalm 23, do you, do you know uh, one of the, one of the um, I guess, what you call outstanding features that it has that is notorieties that it has. Uh, there's a setting that it is read in more than any other psalm. Does anybody know what that is? Who said that? Who was the first one? Okay, thank you. It was a funeral. Uh, Kay said that, and that's exactly right. It's the most commonly read psalm at funerals. But I, 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 and that's great, and that's wonderful, because I think uh, anything that's good for life is good for death, you know. But I want to tell you, this psalm is more about your life than it is about your death. If, if you pay attention to it in your life, it'll be a whole lot more meaningful when it's read at your death, okay, if it is, if that's when you choose to have read, read at, your, at your funeral. But it is, it is very, very common. I, I probably 98% of the funerals I've ever done, I've read it in those uh, funerals as well. Uh, it does have a reference to the, you know, the valley of the shadow of death, and so that's in there, but uh, most of what is being talked about in that is how to live your life. And, uh, and so today, uh, we're going to especially focus on verse 3. We're going to uh, notice some things in verse 2 as well. But I want us to, you can either um, open up your Bible, Psalm 23. Uh, that's the only passage I have a couple other verses I'm going to read with read to you, but um, I, I, it's the only passage that you know that we're going to really refer to as a foundation of our scripture uh, lesson today. And so, but you can open the Bible uh, to it, or you can uh, take your little little memory sheet or your sermon notes. And uh, I tell you what, I'm not 100 percent sure. I can't remember now because I did this uh, before I went on the on the trip, and I didn't put it on the handout notes. So I'm not sure. Which translation? I'm going to use it from the ESV because that's what I'm encouraging us to memorize it in. If you haven't memorized it in something else, um, to memorize it in that. And so let's read it. Let's all read it together, okay? Right where you are. All right, let's start. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Psalm 23 one through three. Now, uh, I'm going to, if you saw that it mentions that he leads us twice in this, uh, in this short three verses. And the first one is he leads us beside still waters. And, uh, and that tells us a little bit about the fact that uh, even what 
those of us guys did this past time. We, we did activities and things, but it was a restful time. And, uh, and I think that that's, you know, built into it. I think the very first one we went on, we were like scheduled, you know, like crazy. We kind of realized a little bit of rest, a little bit of relaxation is helpful. And, um, and, it, and it's just, uh, it, and, and that God, God provides that for us. Um, how many of you, and don't even raise your hand because I, I know, you know, uh, sometimes you get tired of raising your hands. I know it's really, it's really a it takes a lot of effort, doesn't it, um, to raise your hand in church? So I'll just I'll save that for when I really need you to, okay? Um, but because because I know this is true, many of us feel like we're living life at a very fast pace, a very fast pace. And if you, in particular, if you and your spouse are both working, if you have young children, if you have children at home, any age or stage. Uh, you, you, you feel slammed so much of the time. Sometimes you feel like you'll never get caught up, never get caught up. And then you start questioning, why did I sign up for this? Why did I choose to do this? Why did I, you know, we start, then we start throwing stuff out, trying to control it and manage it. And I believe that God, if he is leading us, one of the things he will do is he will lead us to some restful places too. And, uh, and, and that's, uh, very, very, very important. And if you don't find yourself doing any resting in the sense of having some pause moments, having a little bit of margin in your life, I would, I would encourage you that if you follow God, if you're led by him, one of the things he will do is he will help you do that. I had a phone call from someone yesterday uh, asking me about something that they had kind of felt like God impressed on them. And uh, one of the things was, and this is a person who's extremely busy, way busier than about anybody else I really know personally, and it has to do with all of the commitments and obligations that they really have in their life. And they said that they were asking God, God, I feel like there's something else you want from me. And so they were, they were they, they reading the scripture, they're doing a lot of disciplined things and trying to you know, operate by that. But they said, so they asked the question, asked God, God, what, what do you want from me? And then they laughed. And they said, you know, haven't you said before that uh, be careful what you ask for? And, uh, and you know, I, I don't really think you ought to be careful what you ask for God from God, but you need to be aware that God does answer prayer. And in particular, uh, if there's something that he's been wanting to say to us for a while and we have been kind of breezing by, so this person said, he asked, what, what do you want from me? And he said the only thing that came to his mind was one word, and it was time. And then he and I both laughed out loud because I know how t- pressed his time is. And, 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 um, and, 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 and I laughed because I felt like that really is the way God is. And, uh, and, and I also laughed because I knew how much of a struggle that would be. And, uh, and, and so, but here, here's, the, here's the truth of the matter. And that is, if you are busy, 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 and you don't have time for the things that matter and time for God, then you are too busy, for one. The other thing is, if you give God the time he asks for, you all of a sudden, I think, will find the way you spend the rest of your time much better served and with a much better perspective, much better attitude, everything. So I want to, uh, I, w- I, wanted, I want us to dive into some things here from this psalm. And we talked about he leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. And then he leads me in the right path for his name's sake. Some, some translations say he leads me in the path of righteousness. Righteousness means, just simply means the right thing. He's the right thing. And sometimes it's like one of those religious words. You know, it's like, oh, righteous. Well, righteous just means doing the right thing. If you're righteous, you're doing what's right. It's as simple as that. And so, uh, and, and, and so he leads me in the right path for his name's sake. So we're going to talk about how do, we, how do we have that path? How do we follow that path? How do we know where that path is? And so I'm going to look at it from two angles. First thing, first five, is I'm gonna, there's some things we need to stop. If we're going to follow God, there's some things we have to stop doing or stop following in our life. And then some things we need to, uh, steps we need to take 
to get uh, his guidance in our lives. So let's look, first of all, at uh, uh, the five things we need to stop. I must stop being led by culture that is counter to God. Are, do you think there's any part of our culture that is counter to God today? Yeah, a lot of it, isn't it? I mean, it's, a, it's like rampant in our culture. Our culture is, in fact, there's almost a sense of a pushback on anything that is, uh, has to do with God or the Bible or that kind of thing. There's, there's a pushback on it, you know. And there's this idea that is prevalent in our culture that says, well, if everybody is doing it, it must be okay, All right? It must be okay. I mean, everybody wouldn't be doing it if it wasn't okay. Really? That's not true necessarily. Now, here's the thing. I, don't, I believe sometimes as Christians we can live in a reactionary manner where anything that isn't promoted by the church or whatever, we're against it. Well, I don't think that's helpful either. But I do think it's helpful for us to, to weigh out what is right and what is wrong. And uh, just because everybody is doing it doesn't make it right. You ever had your children come home? You know, I, I, Hunter, I think I said this the other Sunday, maybe, but he came home and said, Dad, everybody at school has an iPhone. I said, what? I didn't have an iPhone. I said, that's a bunch of baloney. He was everybody. He said, even kids in kindergarten have them. <laughs> I said, well, I'm going to go to school with you tomorrow, and we're going to check this out. Well, he, you know, he had two or three friends who's at least their mom lets them probably have a little more freedom with than they should or something like that. But, um, but I mean, it might come to that someday. But I know that's not the truth right now. But, boy, he, he just thought if he could throw in there everybody, then I'd be like, oh, wow, let's go to the store and get one right now. I mean, everybody's doing it. Surely it'd be okay. Um, but, but it is, you know, I, I believe that most of the bad habits that people form that go with them into parts of their life, you know, and, and I'll just I'm not pick it on anybody who smokes in here or anything like that, but I'm just saying many times people get stuck with a habit that they did just because everybody else was doing it. Everybody they were standing around, hanging around with, and they did it, and then it kind of grabbed them. And I'm just going to tell you, just because everybody is doing something, I'm not just picking on that issue because that's kind of a minor issue in today's culture, but I'm just saying uh, for what we face. But what I am saying is this, that you, you know, you, you, we easily adapt ourselves to things just because everybody else is doing it, and then we find ourselves trapped in those things. And so I just, just want to say that if you're going to follow God, it's going to be really difficult for you to follow God and follow everything culture promotes, in particular if it's something that is uh, counter to what God wants for you. You know, there's this idea that is prevalent in our culture, too, that if it's legal, what well, must be moral? An immoral nation will make a lot of things legal that are not moral. You know, I mean, just an example is abortion. Just because abortion is legal does not mean that it's moral. And, uh, and, uh, and, and that's just one example. But, you know, sometimes they, people go, what's legal, you know? I mean, I think uh, marijuana seems to be becoming more and more legal. Uh, and uh, I'm not saying that it's a good choice for you if you just because it's legal, okay? Um, what about magazines? Um, there's a lot of magazines that want to tell, especially, well, I think it's more than just the women, but tell you women what is in and what's out. What's in and what's out. Oh, that's so yesterday. Okay, when I paid $100 for it, can I wear it three more months or something, you know? I mean, I, I, I kind of like it. You know, it's like, it doesn't matter if you like it or not. It's in or out. You know, you, you, you don't be weird, then you don't, there's so much pressure to fit in, to be, you know, the, the, the most successful people in the world are the people who went against the flow of what everybody else is doing. Um, you know, Bill Gates was kind of a nerd when he was growing up. He spent a lot of time at the library and all kinds of stuff most teenagers didn't do. He did a lot of things that others You know what? Everybody loved to be as rich as Bill Gates, but they were dumb. No, I'm just kidding. And they just went along with the crowd. Hey, we're, uh, uh, I'm like everybody else. Well, why wouldn't you be like yourself, like God made you, and do something different? Not to say he's a, the, the image of you ought to go for it, but I'm just saying most people that are name recognized, you know their names, and they've made a mark in the world in some way or another, are people who went against the flow. You don't, you don't, you don't 
see people recognize, we want to honor this guy today. We want to bring him up here and honor him. He's just like everybody else. He just did everything everybody else did. This is the, most, this is the coolest guy you've ever seen. He, in fact, if you do something, he'll do it too. This is, this is the biggest copycat you've ever seen in your life. This is the coolest dude. No, you don't do that. We don't recognize and honor people who are just trying to be like everybody else. Now, I also will tell you this. There is a name that's used for people who try to be different just for the sake of being different. It's generally called weird. Okay, now, I'm not asking you to be weird, but I'm asking you to cut a path that is, that is what you're supposed to be cutting, not just what everybody else says or, or thinks about you, you know? I, I think we have just this cookie-cutter culture going on trying to make everybody fit in. Why? Why? Why do you want to fit in so much? What about just finding out what God wants for you and do that? And I'm telling you, God doesn't want you to be weird. You know, there's a verse of Scripture in the King James that said that God's people are peculiar people. Some people took that really literally, and they're like, let's, be, let's, let's make religion and Christian people as weird as possible, you know. And there's groups that do that in all reaction to everything. That, that isn't God's plan. Peculiar, in fact, that isn't even what the original word means for that is an old English word. It means that we're different. It means we're different, but not different to be different. You want like, oh, that person's not a Christian. They, I'm going to do this. You don't do that. We do a lot of things. We have a lot of things in common with people who aren't believers. But what we do is say we're that crosses the line of I'm going to follow God or I'm going to follow what the world's doing, then I'm going to follow God. And if that makes me different, it makes me different. But I'm not being different to be weird or just to be different. I'm being different so that I can be obedient to God. Anybody ever, I can't remember what the name of the show is. I grew up without a television, so I'm very ignorant about a lot of TV things. But I did see this show where this guy, um, every time he was introduced, he would introduce, he goes, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. Anybody? Huh? What's that called? Okay, Bob Newhart Show. And thank you. I should have researched it or something, but I didn't. Uh, but, but I have three brothers. So every time, you know, I introduce them, I go, this is my brother Daryl, my other brother Daryl, my other brother Daryl. You tell Randy I said that, too. His uh, daughter-in-law is here this morning, my brother, brother Andy. Um, but th the point is, for me, I'm like, you know, that was very funny to me, always is funny to me. I, see, when I think about it today, I think it's very funny. But it's how our world, we laugh at that. Like, that, those are the weirdest guys. That's weird. You know what? Most of us here are tempted to be Daryl and then the other Daryl. That's what we're tempted. We want to be like everybody else. We don't want to be different. Again, don't be weird. Don't be different to be different. But if you're following God, there's sometimes you're going to be different. There's sometimes you're going, to, you're going to do some things other people don't do. You're not going to do some things other people do. Are you willing? Number two, I must stop being led by friends that aren't following God. Now, notice, I didn't say you got to stop being friends with everybody who's not following God. I said you got to stop being led my friends were not following God. Sometimes that does mean a separation of friendship if, 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 that's, uh, if that's what it you know, might come to. But, you know, what if someone just says to you, hey, you know, you're friends with them, and they're going, hey, let's watch this TV show. You know, there, there, there are some things that you shouldn't watch. There's some things that you shouldn't put into your eye gate. Um, you know, and, and it doesn't matter if... They're the most popular shows or not. I've heard of some very popular shows that sounded like, I don't know. I don't, I, I, you know, I don't want to mention them because I'm not an expert on them. I might be wrong, but, uh, but some shows that just sound like to me that they promote a very immoral lifestyle. And, uh, and just because a lot of people watch it doesn't necessarily mean you have to. So if you have friends who are, inviting you to do things that you feel like are against your values and what God would be leading you to do, then you have to, you have to ask this question, who's leading who? And uh, are you being led, you know, by, and, and, I, and I, you know, when I was growing up, I, uh, this has been an area that I haven't, I would say I haven't had a lot of struggle with in the uh, sense of letting other people influence me too much. I think I'm too independent-minded and, uh, and I think my mom drove a lot of things into me uh, with regard to crowd following and stuff like that. But um, one of the things that, you know, that I believe very firmly is if you have a friend and, you, and they want to do something that you feel like would be 
not honoring to God, um, and they want you to participate in it, that if you need to be able, if you can say to them, you know, you're not judge, you don't have to judge them for doing it. It's simply saying, I don't think I'd be comfortable watching that show, or I don't, you know, I'd rather not do that. If they can't accept that, then they may not be that great a friend anyway. Okay, if you only have to do whatever they want you to do, I think a good friend can allow for some disagreement, can allow for saying, hey, I'm not really all that comfortable doing that. And, that's, and there's and there's respect. If there's there's got to be respect, and um, and and so you have to ask who is leading who. Um, you know, whenever we allow ourselves just to watch anything, read anything, uh, oftentimes we're just filling our head with a lot of garbage, a lot of garbage. Um, there's a lot of people that worry about clean air. I think that's a good thing. I mean, I think having clean air is a good thing. But there's, I mean, a lot of people really, really worried about clean air. Also clean water. And I'm, I, I'm kind of concerned about clean water. I'd like to have clean water too. But I notice not as many people are as worried about a clean mind things that will pollute our mind. You know, I, I've seen people walk around in public and it's probably from a health reason or they else they needed to, but wearing a, wearing a mask of like a white mask, you know, and uh, there were times when Randy was in for his uh, heart transplant or in times in, where we'd have to wear a mask because um, it, it is, just needed to have as sterile environment as possible. And, uh, but, it seems like that, in general, people are not so worried about polluting their mind. I would say if you're going to follow God, if you're going to be led by God, you need to be careful about what you allow into your mind. And also, I don't know if you've noticed this or not. Tyler, I want to make sure you're listening, okay? Because this is, I'm going to, could you tell me if he laughs at this or not? Okay, this is a joke, but it's a good joke. It's a really good joke. Um, I'm just telling you straight up. I was worried, Brandon. You were up here going, this is a really good joke. I'm thinking, man, if it flops, Brandon, that's going to be really bad. You know, you're up here building up. I'm going to tell you right in the start, this is a really good joke, okay? I want to know. I'm not going to look at him, but I want to know if Tyler laughs whenever I tell it. You know, some people are so open-minded, their brains fall out. <laughs> he was wanting to laugh so bad he couldn't stand it. He's trying. Um, yeah. He's doing like VNG used to do. I told some of the guys this on the trip. Uh, my kids, I, I was always trying to be funny with, especially my first set of kids. Well, I guess I do with these guys too. Always just trying to be funny. And so VNG get tired of it. I mean, she just, you know, she just like, oh man, I wish I got three kids here, you know. And uh, and so sometimes, you know, they would be busting up laughing, and she'd be laughing too. And they'd go, "See, you're laughing, mom. You think he's funny too?" And she'd go, "No, I'm not laughing because it's funny. I'm laughing because you're laughing." And so, anyway, you, you, that'll hit you later. So uh, he's trying to go, I'm just laughing because you guys are laughing. Um, there's different ways. We only <laughs> okay. Um, but you think about that. There's a lot of truth, even though it's sort of a humorous way of saying it. You can be so open-minded that you lose your marbles. Um, number three. I must stop being led by sources that are not based on God's truth. Um, please do not raise your hand on this because I don't want to think poorly of you. I think of, I, I really don't. But uh, I, I call it the horror scope. Do you know your horror scope? You know, listen. Let me just tell you. You go. Oh, it's just entertaining. It's just fun stuff. What if it tells you? that you're going to have a bad day, but today's going to be a bad day. You go, oh, it doesn't mean anything to me. Guess what? Everything that was going to happen to you that day, that, whether you read that or not, had nothing to do with that, that you, you know, stub your toe, you're going, oh, see, I'm having a bad day, you know? And uh, anything that happens, you think it's because that, it's a bunch of baloney. You're giving c control of your mind, the thought process, over to something else. Uh, so next time you see a, um, a horoscope and you're thinking, I want to read that, I just want to see what it says. Just put the name up there, horror scope, okay? Uh, it, it fits it very well. You know, and, and, and we laugh, people joke about palm reading, but you know, for all the laughs and jokes about it, man, there, I, I see quite a few of them around Augusta. I, mean, I actually see, I, I think I could think right now about half a dozen of them 
that are, you know, spotted out around Augusta. Somebody must be going to a palm reader. Somebody must be. And if you're banking your future, you're banking what's going to happen to you, who you're going to marry or something else, on someone reading your palm, you're in trouble, man. I mean, I'm just telling you, you're in trouble. You're, that, that, you are, you are, you are asking for confusion. You are asking for misguidance. Uh, I mean, I mean, and you're going to pay money for it. On top of that, terrible. Um, there's a lot. I mean, I, I don't mean this wrong, but I, I'd go to my barber shop and talk to my barber before and, and get their advice before I would do that. You know, I'd even write Dear Abby first. You know, and that's pretty bad. No, I'm just saying. Anyway. Um, but um, you know, I, I. I uh, I know that there are psychic line uh, advertisements on television. And I know that most people laugh it off, and I know somewhere in the little advertisement it says for entertainment only, even though it doesn't come across that way. Well, I want to tell you, if you find yourself at 3 o'clock in the morning awake like Manji was, and you're worried about all this stuff and going, you know that psychic line, I wrote that down. I'm going to go talk to them about this stuff. You're, if, if you get to that point and you think you got to do that, let me give you, let me tell you one thing to do, please, if you, I'm telling you, don't do it. But if you do get to that point, you're going, I just got to, I just got to have somebody tell me something. You pick up that line, you call. The minute they ask you for your credit card number, do this. Say, well, if, if you're a true psychic, baby, you already know my card number, don't you? You read it to me. Now, and if they can't give you your credit card number, I'd hang up a phone, okay? They don't know anything else about you either. All they know is they're going to deduct some money off your account. That's about it. So that's for what it's worth. There's something about human nature. We want visible things. We want visual things. You know, we can read the story of the children of Israel crossing over uh, the, the wilderness and Moses being up getting the Ten Commandments and then building the calf, golden calf, and going, that is strange. They gave up all their jewelry and everything else and turned into this golden calf, and they're worshiping it. Like, how crazy can this be? But it's not amazing what we worship, what we have as our little gods that we're committed to, that we're dedicated to. must stop being led by sources that are not based on God's truth. Number four, I must stop being led by my circumstances. You know, this is, uh, I don't have time to do this justice, but what I want to say to you is this about that. Sometimes we get very mystical about our circumstances. Now, now, and when I say that, let me go ahead and preface that by saying this. I believe very few things in life are coincidental. You know, I, I, don't, I don't think I believe in a lot of coincidence. I believe in providence. But I also believe that we can overinterpret our circumstances. Because we can say, well, you know, well, this just happened. So it must be God's will. Well, think about a lot of bad things that just happened. And, you know, maybe you wouldn't want to put God's will in that. You know, there's, there's, there's a lot of, like, uh, superstitious kind of ideas that go along whenever you base everything on your circumstances. I want to tell you this. If you look at the giants of faith, many of them operated in a way opposite of what would be natural to their circumstances. Abraham, whenever he was called out and God gave him the land, I mean, he, he already, he, 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 what was his need to go do that? Nothing about his circumstances said, you need to run away, you need to go chase this, you need to go do this. But God gave him, there was nothing in, in, in Noah's circumstances that made him build an ark. And yet for over 100 years, he was out there faithfully building an ark. Not because the circumstances called for it, but because God led him to do that. In fact, everything in the circumstances said, this is the most foolish, silly project. You know, and, and Jonah, whenever he ran away from God, he walked up to the boat and asked if they had space. They were going in the exact opposite direction of where Noah was supposed, to, or where uh, Jonah was supposed to be going. Went in the exact opposite direction. They walk, They had space for him. Hey, it just worked out. Oh, he had enough money for the fare. Hey, it just worked out. Just because something just works out doesn't mean it's God's will. Doesn't mean it's not His will. But be careful about just saying letting circumstances dictate what you do or don't do. 
hey, I was approved for this loan. I was whatever. That, that doesn't determine. It, it helps. I mean, if you really need something, you really, it's got to work out. But just because something works out doesn't necessarily mean it's God's will. We over-spiritualize things that God doesn't spiritualize. So what I want to tell you is be aware that God does work in the midst of your circumstance, but what God is typically using circumstances for is to develop the character that you need for life. And so whenever you have tough circumstances, you know, it's funny, we, we'll, we'll, we'll bash against walls for certain kinds of things to get our way or to get something we want. But sometimes when it comes down to something as simple as reading the Bible, you know, we don't say this. I don't know that I've ever heard anybody say I don't think it's God's will for me to read the Bible. But a lot of people act like it because it doesn't naturally happen. If everything that is you're supposed to do naturally happens to you, you'll live in a very small world. So you have to, you have to rise above your circumstances many times. You have to push through your circumstances. You have to change your circumstances sometimes. Don't let your circumstances dictate how you live your life. I got to stop on that, and it's, I got a lot more to say. The Bible talks a lot about, I'll say this, in, in, in perseverance. Perseverance. You ever uh, heard the word perseverance before? How many have heard the word perseverance? How many of you like the word perseverance? You like it? That's good. I'm glad you do. Because you're gonna, you, if you're going to accomplish anything in life, you're going to have to persevere. But I can tell you, perseverance is not always fun. A lot of times it's tough. It's hard because it means you have to push past the natural limits that we have. That, 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 that we have to push past the natural limits. God is always pushing you past your natural limits. Not in every way, not in every way, but in some way he's stretching. He's stretching your face someplace today. And if, he, and if you're going, well, I don't feel stretched anywhere. Well, get out of the rocking chair and get moving. You know, get in the game. Get involved because it's going to happen. I, I uh, some, somewhere I think we were having a discussion. I think a couple of you guys were in this discussion. We were having a discussion about the fact that sometimes um, people will say, "Oh, hey, don't pray for patience. Don't don't pray for patience." Why do people say don't pray for patience? Why do they say that? Anybody? Pardon me. Pardon me. Yeah, patience is a verb. But what what is it? Well, he, God's gonna, you're gonna, you're gonna, if you're praying for patience, you're gonna have to use it. God's gonna give you some stuff you're gonna find out if you have patience or not. You, here, here's, here's how I interpret that, okay? Because you'll hear a lot of people say, don't pray for patience. Next time someone tells you not to pray for patience, say, that's a bunch of baloney. Just say that, okay? Say it, nice, say it nicer than that. That's a bunch of baloney. See, in fact, I'm, I'm, I am in big trouble if I don't pay, pray for patience. Because guess what? Trials and tribulations and difficulties and things that test my patience are going to happen. And if you haven't prayed for patience, you're stuck just trying to figure it out on your own. God isn't one of, you know, we, we have such weird views of God. Well, if I, if I pray for patience, well, he's going he's gonna to really let me have it. No, he's going to let you experience things in life that you're going to need patience for. So pray for it. If, if God tells you, to, if God's word tells you to pray for something or to ask for something, don't ever be afraid to ask for it because you need it. You're going to need it. You're going to need, and, and if you don't ask for it, you may not have it and uh, end up in the jail report because you didn't control yourself and didn't have patience. Anyway, that's a joke, but it's supposed to be. Is Tyler laughing? No, he's not laughing on that either. Man, I'm telling you. That's my barometer now, Tyler. You got to be laughing. You got to bring your at least a, a laughing something with you. Um, I'm going to close with this because I don't have time to do the other side of this. Uh, we did some very important things today, and I'm glad we did. So here's where we are. Uh, I must stop being led by my feelings. Well, I feel uh, feelings matter. Okay, I don't mean my feelings don't matter. And I'm going to. I've said it before. Anytime I'm talking to somebody and they say, "Well, I feel like whatever," I have this little antenna that goes up. Just like that, going, oh, that's how they feel. Doesn't mean it's right, doesn't mean it's right, but that's how, when they feel something, that's pretty personal, that's getting close. So those feelings matter, but feelings can be very misleading. There's one thing that is true for sure about feelings. 
Anybody want to tell me what it is? What? They come and they go. That's the, they change. I mean, they change. Riding high. That's all right. Enjoy it. It's a good thing. But you also sometimes are going to have some lows. You're going to have some times in between. Emotions change. They don't stay the same. You know, happy. We can be happy, happy, happy. Get a phone call. Oh, man, all of a sudden we're distraught. This is terrible. This is one of the worst days of my life. You get another phone call. Oh, it got solved. Yeah, we're happy again. I mean, I mean, we are sick people. Why, you know, I mean, we're kind of, but it, that's okay. Just remember, don't trust your emotions to guide you. Well, I feel like this would be a good car. I, we happen to live in a time period where you can do quite a bit of research. I mean, you can overdo it, but you can, you know, you can, you can check out consumer reports. You can do very easily these days. Yeah, but I just have a feeling about this one. Well, I hope that feeling works out okay for you. You know, I, I mean, feelings are great. They're a gift from God, but they're not real great at leading your life. Here's, here's you, you ever heard of zigzagging? You know, you ever seen people zigzagging out of traffic? What do you think about people who are zigzagging besides thinking they're bad people? Okay. But what are you, what are you predicting about their future whenever you see them zigzagging, zigzagging out of traffic? What? Death wish. They're, 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 they're going to have a wreck. Something bad's going to happen. That, they are taking, they're just zigzagging. It's crazy. They're going to hurt somebody else. I'm going to tell you, if you live by your feelings, your life will be a zigzag life. You need to live by the truth of God. Now, I'm going to finish this message next Sunday. You know, that's, I'm not famous for many things, but I am famous for turning one sermon into two. Uh, I, I, that is, I'm, I'll go down on, I'll go down on that one at my funeral. Please, somebody mention that, you know, I've never seen a pastor in my whole life. that could turn one sermon into a whole series, you know? Um, so, so I'm going to live up to my reputation.